Welcome back to Nightly Nonsense, where we try to make a little bit of sense out of some of the nonsense that's all around us. And we've been doing that lately in the way of waiting. I'm talking to you about people in the Bible that have waited. Just shared with you about my friend Robbie and his waiting experience. And the truth is all of us have waiting. Uh, we have waiting because we serve a God who's putting everything together for his purpose, his plan in perfection. So it means that we're going to be waiting, right? Went to a football game uh, one time, only one time, uh, and I was uh, marveling at the fact that the game's going, it's progressing. You know, the the, the team that, that we were voting for, we were rooting for, they're moving down the field, they're about ready to score, and all of a sudden, out of the blue, there's a timeout. Right? There, there's, a, there's a timeout, and everybody stops because there's a TV timeout. So everybody in the stadium, 70-some thousand people, all the football players, all the coaches, all, all the people are on pause. They're waiting. They're waiting for one man who's standing in the middle of the field to say to everybody, okay, we can start now again. Suddenly, we can, we can start they got their helmets off, they're talking to each other, and all of a sudden, the referee gets a signal that says, hey, we're ready to go again, and all of a sudden, it starts up again, right? We just, we just suddenly begin. That's what, that's what it's like when we work with God. See, when we work for God, you and I, we can make things happen, and we're constantly busy, and we're constantly doing things all the time. Constantly, constantly, constantly. Busy work, busy work, busy work, busy work. The problem with that is we can get ourselves tired out. We can get ourselves out of position. We can get ourselves involved in something that when God then says, hey, can you do this for me? Right, I'm ready to work. We're, we're saying, oh, I got to finish this project. I got to do this. Right, We can get out from underneath God's will, God's purpose, God's plan, God's protection, God's provision. We can get out from underneath all of that stuff because we, we're, we're so busy working for God. We've got to be doing something. All of us feel that way. It's hard to rest. People who take vacations, it takes a day or two to really get into a, a rest mode where you realize, hey, I don't have to get up at whatever time it is. I don't have to go do this. I don't have to be responsible. I can put my phone off to the side, whatever it is. It's hard to do that, right? And so we, we wait and waiting, waiting is important. Waiting is a process. Waiting, right, has value. Waiting has purpose again. Waiting is when we learn more about God. When we learn how to get in tune with God, when we start seeing the real perspective of who God is. But waiting is what we do while we're waiting for God to move in our lives. And so what we need to do, what we need to look at is that, you know, sometimes God is not visibly working in our lives, you know, keeping us busy. He's always at work. But maybe sometimes we need to take our perception and our perspective and shift it to other things and other people. That while I'm waiting for God to move, what's he doing all around here? You see, sometimes God is getting things to the place where they need to be. One of the important things that, that we talked about was when, when God promised Abraham, right, that, that he was going to be a great people, that they were going to go to a promised land. He then warned them and said, hey, it's going to be 400 years that you're going to live in another country, that you're going to serve other people. It's not going to be fun, right? But part of the reason for that was he says that the time of the Amorites has not yet come. He's waiting for a people, for another people, for, for what he was doing in them. Right? What he was doing with them. He was giving them opportunity to come to him, to know him, to look to him. You see, sometimes we're waiting for things. And God's giving opportunity to other people to catch up. He's giving that one last opportunity. It's funny, we pray for people to come to know the Lord. And then we get frustrated when we're waiting because God's working in their lives. I was talking to somebody this week and saying, listen, I, I, I just need you sometimes 
to listen to me, right? And then let me catch up to where you are. See, sometimes waiting just gives us that brief little pause, that brief little pause so that we can allow other people to catch up to us or help the people who are supposed to be walking with us, the people that are be, have been prepared for whatever it is that God has for us. It's important that we understand. It's important that we know. And God doesn't make us wait because he's some mean, angry God who's punishing us, right? It, 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 he's making us wait because things are working out. It reminds me of the dentist. I don't like dentists. don't like going to the dentist uh, in any way, shape, or form. I like dentists, the people. Uh, but I don't like dentists, the profession, right? And so when we go to the dentist, there's a lot of waiting that's involved, right? Uh, when you have a cavity, you need a filling, you need a tooth work done, they put the Novocaine in and then they leave you. And they leave you for a little while for it to work, right? Imagine if they gave you the shot and then immediately started drilling. It wouldn't have any effect. You'd feel all of the pain. Why? Because the Novocaine hasn't gotten to work yet. They know there's a certain amount of time that you need to let the Novocaine work. And then you only have a certain amount of time before it starts wearing off, right? So we have to wait for it to take effect so that we can effectively protect somebody while we're working on them as a dentist. Same thing across the board. You don't want them to start, start operating on you before the anesthesia works. Right? You don't get to just put money in the bank. Right, It has to actually go in your account, be credited to you before you can start spending it. There's a little waiting period before things clear, before things uh, like you can use the resources. Right, There's always this waiting period. That waiting period has a purpose and it has a plan. We've talked about a lot of different examples of that. People who were waiting. But what I want to focus in on is the fact that eventually the dentist walks in the room and says, okay, let's go, right? Eventually, the doctor walks in and says, hey, here's your results. Uh, suddenly, right, the bank calls and says, hey, your loan's approved, let's go, right? Suddenly, you're driving off with a new car that you've been looking for. You've been waiting and waiting and waiting for the right deal and suddenly it appears and then all of a sudden, boom, you get a new car and everybody's like, whoa, how did that happen? When did you get the car? And you're like, man, I've been looking for months and months and months and all of a sudden it disappeared and it was great, right? Suddenly people get married. Suddenly people are in a relationship and you're like, whoa, wait, when did that happen? And they're like, yeah, oh, we've been talking for months and you know, we've been doing a little bit here and there all under the radar. They've been, they were waiting and suddenly God provided, right? There's a lot of suddenly. We, we're living in, in a community right now, in a culture where we're, we're facing some tough things. People who are one day okay and right and good are suddenly sick. People who two, three, four days ago we were talking with, we were laughing with, they're suddenly not with us anymore. Right? There are lots of things that are going on. I recently had the opportunity to do uh, the funeral for a cousin. And, a, and just a week and a half later, uh, I did the funeral for his wife. A week exactly later, she, she passed away. Suddenly, all of a sudden, there's family that doesn't have two pieces of their family. Right? Suddenly... We get a check in the mail and everything's okay. Suddenly, God says, wait and wait and wait and wait. Right? And then suddenly something happens that frees us up. And what we find is God put this part here and this part here and this part here and this part here and this part here. He's working together. I want to finish with that right now, part one of suddenly. And then I want to, I want to come back in, a, in the next moment. And I want to talk to you about, hey, uh, here's a specific example of suddenly, and here's the ramifications of that. So we'll see you next time. Nightly Nonsense.